If you're somebody who's recently gone through a breakup or a divorce and you're sitting there and you're asking yourself, can I get my ex back? Does it make sense to move on past them instead? How long is it going to take to heal? And how do I get back into dating if I do decide that this relationship is not going to work and there's no way to repair it or to get back with them? Then I want you to pay attention to this video because I've explicitly made this video for you. So if you're not familiar with my content, my name is Evan. I run the account Performance Potential here on YouTube and on TikTok as well. At the time of making this video, I have about 465,000 followers on TikTok, but I want to really start making more content on YouTube because I understand that it's important to get this more nuanced content in front of people who are struggling with this and act as a resource for you to have all the information that you can to make the right decision. So what I want to start off by talking about is the first part. Can I get them back? How do I get them back? Or should I get them back? Because those are the questions you really need to be asking yourself. If your ex lied to you, cheated on you, manipulated you, and abused you, the only reason you wanna get back together with them is because of trauma. That's the only reason why. Someone who does terrible things like that to you, they don't deserve to be in a relationship with you. And if you are trying to get back to, into a relationship with somebody who did those things to you, you are showing that you are not worth it. You do not value yourself. And see, this is what most people on the internet will not tell you because most people on the internet are trying to sell you some BS. Full transparency, I'm a dating relationship coach. I have a lot of clients. I have a community. I have personal clients that I work with, but I cannot not tell the truth to people. You understand? I have to be straight up with people because I care more about my clients' results than I care about getting business. And that's what a lot of people on the internet will not tell you. They will say, there's a quick fix to get your ex back. Go no contact. Don't do this. Play this social media game. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's all BS. 90% of it is BS because at the end of the day, you're pursuing someone and you're chasing someone who you should not be with. I can tell you with almost 100% certainty, and I know in the back of your mind right now, you're saying, oh my God, so there's a chance that I can get back together with them and it makes sense, but yes, technically yes. But I'm telling you with like 95% certainty, getting back together with them is a bad idea. And the reason why it is a bad idea is because more often than not, they haven't changed. And more often than not, you are trying to get back into a dynamic in a relationship that is not beneficial for you. Will going no contact give you a better chance of getting back together with your ex? Yes, it absolutely will. But the reason why you should be going no contact is not because you're trying to get them back. The reason why you're going no contact is because you're trying to number one, heal, and number two, move on past this person. And inevitably, what happens when you take ownership of your life and you try to move on and heal, people come back. That's just inevitably what happens. So the fact of the matter is, number one thing you need to do is you need to go no contact. You need to take time apart away from this person. You need to stop talking to them. That's the first thing you need to do. Number two, you need to work on healing. You need to work on getting Getting better. Now, this time frame for everybody is going to be a little bit different. It takes everybody a little bit longer to heal, a little bit longer to work through those traumas, and everybody's relationship or ex relationship situation is different. If you only dated for three months and you were not deeply in love, it might not be as difficult for someone who is married 10 plus years who is deeply in love to move on. So just understand that your healing journey is going to be different than other people's healing journey. Now, the next piece that I really want to hit on is you cannot isolate yourself. As I mentioned before, I have a community that I work with because I know that isolation is going to be the enemy of you healing because you're not talking to anybody about your problems. You're not asking for help. Help. You're not listening to people who have gone through the same thing, who have done certain things to, to help move past these previous traumas in this bad relationship or relationships plural that you've been in in the past. Now listen, I'm a big proponent of therapy as long as the therapy is more than just talk therapy. I've been to talk therapy a lot. It's great to identify the things that have gone wrong in your past and understand that yes, they still affect you, but what it comes down to is you have information on what's gone wrong in your life, but what are you doing to actually work past it? So if you're only working with a therapist that just talks your ear off or you talk their ear off for all these sessions and you're paying them 120 to 150 dollars a session are they impacting change well more often than not i'm going to tell you that the answer is no because what happens is I'll get clients that'll come to me and they say, I've been in therapy for two years. I've been struggling blank, blank, and blank. And I'll say, okay, great. What outcomes have you gotten in therapy? And they really cannot quantify the outcome that they have gotten in therapy. So understand that if you've just been paying somebody $150 a week for two years and you don't feel any better, you should stop doing that. Healing is not just going and talking to somebody. It's a big part of it, but you need to have a community of people and a coach that are going to give you techniques, tactics, 
tactics and ways to move on outside of just talking to someone about your problems. But definitely do not fall on the other side of the coin where you're just completely isolated and you're not talking to anybody. So the next portion of this that I want you to understand is when you're moving on into another relationship or a dating situation, you can't move on too fast and you can't take too long. Now, I see, again, both sides of the coin here. Some people think that jumping into another relationship, talking to somebody else immediately is going to help fix their problems. This couldn't be further from the truth. And there's two main reasons why this couldn't be further from the truth. The first reason is that you are literally using someone else as a distraction and you are projecting your feelings from your previous relationship onto this new person and you're trying to feel better about yourself and you're living within your ego. You feel unhappy, unfulfilled, you don't have any intimacy in your life and you're going out there and you're either sleeping with people or you're being a serial dater and you're talking to all these people that you don't care about, you're trying to use other people as a crutch and as a distraction from your previous relationship. Please do not do this. The second part is is the person on the complete other side of the coin, the other side of the spectrum is you have been single and you haven't dated for two plus years. Now, again, this goes back to what I said about the therapy situation. Unless you have some serious extenuating circumstances, like you're really trying to get your kids through school or you have a diagnosis of some sort that is making it very difficult for you to move on. If those two things do not apply to you and you're just staying single because you cannot get over your ex, it is your fault. I do not work with people that don't have the ability to take ownership of their own life. Think about it. If you had a problem in any other aspect of your life for two plus years, and you didn't fix it, and you didn't work on fixing it, whose fault is that? It is your fault. Now understand that the reason why it's been so hard for you to move on is yes, because this person hurt you, but because the way in which they hurt you is triggering something inside of you that's more deeply rooted and you have not been able to move on past it. Think about it. If there was one person who came by in your life and they made you feel like you were not enough and you were less than and you were not lovable, you would be like, okay, this person hurt me, but you know, truly this was one person. The sample size is really small. I don't believe this. I don't believe this lie and this limiting belief that I am not enough. So what would happen is you would be able to move on quicker. Now, if you have this lie and this belief in yourself that you are not enough and you're not lovable because your parents didn't treat you that way, your friends didn't treat you that way, all of your exes didn't treat you that way, you're starting to see that your issues are more deeply rooted than just this one relationship. So it's your job to work on that. It's your job to figure out why that is and to start to repair those things from your past. And if you haven't addressed it and you haven't worked on it, then that is your fault. I'm not saying that someone who has been harmed by other people and somebody who's had a lot of tough things happen to them in their life is their fault. It's absolutely not your fault. Not working on it is not your fault. And if you think that by avoiding other people and avoiding being vulnerable and avoiding dating in the future is going to be your best course of action because you're preventing yourself from getting hurt, that's not true. You are just practicing hyper-independence and in the long run, you're going to be lonely and you're going to be upset. So please do not be somebody who moves on like five days later and please do not be somebody who moves on five years later. The only reason why people do that is they have bad information and they're not implementing things the right way to have success in their dating life and in their personal life. So there's a few really important things that I want to wrap up with here and tell you that you should not do as you're trying to heal from this, this trauma and this relationship. The first thing that you shouldn't do is you shouldn't check their social media. The second thing you shouldn't do is you shouldn't reach out to them. And the third thing that you absolutely should not do, as I mentioned before, is move on with somebody else immediately. See, the difference is now is the time to focus on yourself. Now is the time to take the extra time that you have to get better at things and find your purpose. If you're somebody who feels like you haven't found your purpose and you're spinning your wheels in life and you don't know where you're going, then yes, that is a bigger problem than trying to date right now. So the fact of the matter is, before you start dating and you try to get back out there, you need to focus on yourself and take this as an opportunity to learn and get better. Because when it comes down to it, everything that happens to you in life is a learning lesson. And unfortunately, the toughest things that happen to us in our life are the biggest learning experiences that we have. So the difference is you have two options. Option number one is you can sit in your pity and your sorrow and you can never work past this person. You can continue to think about them and obsess about them and believe the lies that you're telling yourself subconsciously 
that you are not enough and you are not lovable. Or you can do what successful people do in life and you can take this as a learning lesson. You can never be with somebody like that again and you can start to get better and work on the things that you need to fix to have a successful dating life, to have a successful professional and personal life. You are not broken, I promise you. You are not broken. You might feel like you're broken, but when it comes down to it, you haven't made the changes, you haven't implemented the changes in your life to get better. I'm telling you, you can get better and you can do better than them. It's gonna take some time. So if you're somebody who feels like you need my help or you wanna be a part of my community so you can begin this healing process and you can help me guide you through this, then I want you to get in touch with me. I'm gonna leave a link in the pinned comment of how you can work with me. There's multiple ways how you can get in touch with me. But ultimately, the next step is on you. It's completely on you. You have to make the decision when is the right time to move on. You have to make the decision when is the right time to invest in yourself, to actually make a change, to affect change in your life and learn from the things that have happened with you as opposed to being a victim of your circumstances. So again, I hope that you make the right choice. If you want more content like this, you know, follow my channel, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below. If there are things I didn't cover in this video that you want me to cover, I will absolutely make another video on it. So I hope this helped. Get in touch with me if you need my help and I'll talk to you soon.